Uh, hey everybody, welcome, 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 welcome to this lovely podcast of mine. We're going to do one more take, one more take of Munch Music. And this is the institution of a big TV station. And um, yeah, um, this was known in the early 80s. And this is the early days of Munch Music, the music station. And I will put this in the title for you people out there. The early days of Munch Music, these are people that are known either in front of the cameras or behind the cameras of a Munch Music station uh, it's at Queen Street West. Um, if you ever go down there, uh, it's not there anymore. They're long gone. But uh, if you go, every go past uh, Queen Street West, that's uh, two hundred. Was it uh, Queen uh, two hundred ninety nine Queen Street West? Uh, there was a station called Much Music, and um, and uh, from its early days, and it was growing really fast. I'm not going to give these people any name recognition. It's because they already know themselves. They know themselves who worked there and who didn't. Um, um, but there's a lot of people that worked there. I'm just not going to get the uh, satisfaction that uh, they're well known. Let's put it that way. These people who work behind the scenes of the camera, who are called uh, video jockeys, they can give their recognition of their stories about behind the scenes of a much music station. But um, but you you might know these people if I mention their names. Um, I'm not going to mention their names because maybe they're still alive. Maybe they passed on, passed away. Maybe. Um, but we do have the book to uh, really tell these stories. And yeah, it was a much music um, music station for in the early days of the early '80s. Uh, it started in 1984, gradually well known in the uh in the troll area as much music station and they had a lot of award shows there um it went till 84 i think 84 to 95 uh, the last uh bit of the much music that was ever there uh these people who uh in, were in the music industry were either were the who was who was going to show up uh, they had live aid concert uh broadcast right from wibley stadium um and yeah, so it started. Uh, they, they did. Uh, they have the footage of when they were much movies were just opening the st TV station in 1984, and ended it in '95, I think in those early days. But uh, yeah, these. Uh, I don't know if I should mention their names on this podcast. Um, I know that my friend knew that before he passed away. Um, but the, yeah, the people who worked behind the scenes of a camera. Um, behind the scenes of a much music station I will put that in the title here and upload it to YouTube and uh, I'm not going to give the person's name who wrote the book uh, you guys will have to find out in the stores um, but yeah these are big legendary names and they're, I, I don't know if they're still in the year 2020 still around to this day but I'm not going to give them any reckon, name recognition I don't know if I should or not but uh, there's a few people that when I watch the actual uh, bunch of music as uh, as years go by, um, there are people come and go on bunch music who are either the, uh, the host or the guest of the program. Um, being one of them was Brian Abs. If you know Brian Abs, he was this famous singer around the world. He was household name. He actually uh, played at much music at one point or time. Um, it was all about uh, music videos. They aired music videos. They would do intimate and interaction sort of thing. So this much music has been around, did a lot of TV programs and tons and tons of hours of footage. Tons and tons of hours. It would, they would have a, a video library at the uh, much music station. I don't know if it's still there, but they were big tapes of hours and hours of, of on air guest or host of these programs and uh and tons of hours tons of tapes of hours it probably even have bloopers in them uh bloopers make mistakes uh time and uh, time again and yeah man I'll, I'll mention the title in this video uh this audio uh, portion no no visuals no uh, uh photos uh please and i'll will put that in the title of this uh, of this um constitution station that was 
thriving. It was really thriving at that time. So it started in 84, ended in 95. So all those years later, and uh, many rock stars were there as guests as the program. But the VJs themselves, I won't, get, I won't tell you about the names of these people who were there. Um, I'll just give you one person that my friend uh, was there. My friend was there one time for his documentary, um, uh, filmed it for his documentary. But this one person needs no introduction. She goes by the name of Erica M. I don't know if you guys know that. Um, she was a, a young lady, just got her uh, foot in the door of a job at a Much Music place. And Much Music hired a lot of people, a lot of... Pun it, was, it was kind of like an institution of a place that you want to work at. And uh, people just drive by and still think about those days of Much Music. 1984... It first started, ended in 95. Ended 95 because uh, uh, people wanted to take over the uh, company, the Much Music Company, and uh, really got bought out. Uh, the whole notion of that, people want to buy it out. They want to... Uh, so it, it had a long run from 84 on to 95 as a Much Music TV station. Um, uh, for a very long time. And it was... Uh, but in front of me, I have my hot little hands right here. I don't know if you people will see this. But this was an uh, early days of Much Music Station. And um, the early days being 84 to 95. Um, Eric M., I don't know if you people have heard about her. She worked there, I think, at the beginning stages. And uh, almost to the beginning stages up till Much Music is no longer there anymore. Um she was the kind of person you would recognize right away if you see her. Um, uh, so, yeah. Uh, she doesn't need any introduction. I just want to tell you out there, folks. Uh, she, she's Eric M. She worked at Much Peace. She was well known for that, essentially. Um, and uh, she, was in, uh, she was probably the earliest person that ever worked there, as far as I know. Um, and I think she's around to this day. I think in the year 2020, I think she's around today. I don't Don't get me wrong. You could look it up on her that Eric M. used to work at Munch Music. It's no longer there anymore. But it just ended in 95 because it got bought out or took it over. Um, and it's no longer there anymore. Now it's a shelf itself, essentially. They would say because it's a shelf itself. Long gone, bygone era. They would say the bygone era of this much music station and it's not thriving anymore it's not thriving they don't have you know uh, award shows there anymore like it used to have I mean like it used to have so it started in 84 the station the TV station started in 84 ended in 95 and years later yeah and they had a couple award shows there been many shows they probably have hours and hours in their much music station probably in the basement with hours and hours of tapes Still, one of these days will be risen from the, as they say, risen from its grave and wants, want, wants to live again kind of thing. I, I know, I know. Uh, people don't want to do this. I know. But one of these days, they'll have to do that because they have probably have tapes and tapes and hours of much music on air. Bloopers, you name it. It'll be in those tapes. I don't know if they were VCS or Betum. Um Big, large, VC they would have these expensive, and I'm talking about expensive broadcast uh, VCS tape machines, uh, what the industry tends to use. And you put it in, and the tape would, uh, would uh, it, it would be the, it would kind of like a VCR that would be a broadcast sort of a, a equipment. It would it'd be in the professional level. Um, uh, so you put tape, and you would broadcast it out to the world, and they would have the, the outputs and the inputs to do it with. Um, and it would send its single out to the uh, broadcast single, and you would see the music video and stuff. So, yeah, it was a big station. It started, uh, it opened up on 84, kind of closed down because somebody overtaked it or just, you know, what I was saying. Uh, but it's now a bygone era. If you look at it, if you go buy it in your car, it's a bygone era. Every time, if I ever go down there sometime, I probably will think about it. Uh, but it's 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 like one of these uh, it's like these institutions shelve itself of its former glory. Um, 
it can just be risen up from the dead and relive again kind of thing. Um, you want to, you want to, you know, lift up the monster and relive it again and have it power up again kind of thing. Um, and yeah, don't get me wrong. Much music, uh, they had all the equipment for it. They had the, uh, the professional equipment there at the time. At the time, they used VCS tapes, uh, the professional VCR equipment for it. Uh, and it would have all the inputs, out the outputs, and this would be broadcast quality VCR things with a lot of... Uh, it's a big, huge thing. It's a very massive broadcast VCR thing. Uh, it weighs a ton. Uh, the, issue, uh, the, the, uh, the tapes they would use would be the VCS or the Batum tapes, um, quality uh, broadcast tapes. And... Uh, and they would broadcast out to the people that see it on TV. And uh, much music, just it, one of these days, it's probably, and it's uh, probably the tapes are from its basement. It wants to be risen from the dead and relive again. I don't know if they still have it, but maybe much music, one of these days, will go down to the basement and see if those tapes still exist. That would be, be a thing for much music to do. Just risen from the dead again and relive again. Kind of thing, wouldn't that be amazing? Just all the bloopers, all the outtakes. Um, they had much music cameras, broadcast cameras, what the industry tends to use. Um, and yeah, it was uh, uh, people would drive by, and you would you would get these celebrities uh, showing up on much music. It could mean anybody, anybody would show up, uh, and uh, it was really good. So there you go, folks. And Constitution of a much music station, Erica M was there. She was a VJ, a VIS jockey. And uh, she was from the early days up till, uh, until it closed down. And uh, she no longer works there anymore, but she's one of these people that worked that much music behind the scenes, front of the camera, behind the camera, whatever. Anyway, she's known on much music. She was, she was, uh, she was on air mainly, many more, more times than I could think of. Um, and you would see her if you saw her in 2020. I would, I would think so. But yeah, my friend Navigon, who was my dear friend, had a documentary crew. They went down to Much Music and filmed the day in the life of him. And Eric M. so happened to be on that day. And he was eating a sandwich. This is a true story. I saw the footage. True story. Eat a sandwich. And uh, yeah. So anyway. And, uh, yeah, so much music, no longer there, but uh, it's kind of like a blast from the past or it's this nostalgic thing to look at. And people who drive by that station downtown at uh, Queen Street West would remember it used to be its much music headquarters there. And they would have Speaker's Corner. Remember that uh, famous Speaker's Corner where you put a quarter, you put a dollar in and you speak your mind. You didn't, it wasn't like, it wasn't like uh, YouTube or anything. It was, you put a... Do, uh, dollar in it would go for a ch uh, and the money would go worthy cause and you could speak your mind about anything and everything and people would go on there anytime they like just put a uh, dollar in and you speak your mind and they would get tape to tape and they have a show called uh, Speaker's Core uh, and you put a, a dollar in and you can speak your mind it's not like it's not like YouTube nowadays where you can go on there so I'm going to put the big huge title Early days of much music from uh, from uh, uh, 1990, uh, so from 1984 to uh, 1995, when they no longer there. But when people drive by down there, it's nostalgic. It's blast from the past. It really is. But one of these days, maybe maybe one of these days, the people at much music or people at uh, that building would probably go down to the basements. And probably look at those tapes again and just see what they have. Just see what they have. They'll probably be amazed what they got on those tapes. They want to wreck the wreck the uh, tapes again and see what we got on those tapes. Maybe they're from maybe the format was on Betum. You need had to have a Betum machine or a VCS machine. Um, I don't know if any one of those machines are still around, but they had the broadcast VCS quality machines to do uh, to put it on these things. Broadcast. These were broadcast machines, and uh, we broadcast out to the uh, to the people who want to watch them on TV, and um, 
It would, uh, and the and the resolution would be like seven. I think it was seventy, uh, seven, twenty p, at that ratio of that. Uh, what these things would be broadcast at, and um, these are broadcast equipment that you a professional level that the industry would would have. Very expensive. I mean, these machines were very expensive. It wasn't like your. Um, it wasn't like when you go to uh, like. Um, Best Buy and you bought a VCR there. No, no, it's not, that's the industry would. Ha uh, that's the industry would have. But the professional level, they would have the broadcast uh, VCR machines. And yeah. So anyway, thank you guys. Just a little brief about Much Music Station from its early days and no longer there anymore. And wherever the tapes are and maybe the vault in the basement of that station will probably be one of these days we'll look at them and just. Just you know, just think about it. It it be, they could probably look at the tapes again, and probably, uh, my my recommendation if you want to look at those tapes again in years past, uh, they would do what they would do is look at see if they would have the machines for them, and if they can be good quality uh, seen. Because remember, they were broadcasting on these uh, broadcast cameras and the, the equipment they used at the t at the time, so. Um, they would shove these VCR tapes into the machine, like really shove them in because they got to do it really fast. And, uh, you know, these are broadcast VCR machines. And uh, they're a broadcast kind of equipment. And, um, and yeah, so anyway, hope you enjoyed this, this early days of much music. Nation Music Station right down in Queen Street. To, what's it called? What's, it, what's, it, what's the uh, station name? Uh, Queen Street West. Two, 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 I even forget the address of this place. But anyway, you guys go find out. You'll find out on Google. Go type in Much Music. It blasts from the past if you ever see it. This blast from the past from the early days. It closed. It shut down in 95 and no longer used anymore. Oh, so the TV station, uh, it's kind of, uh, it was kind of like... Uh, Someone took over the company. Much, um, someone took over the Much Music. It was a, almost like a power struggle. They want to buy out, and companies in those days they had to buy out companies, and and that was it. That was it. The main few people that were there were working there behind the scenes, um, if you're lucky. But anyway, that's all. I'm gonna say it in this title of this uh, podcast, audio podcast, about the early days of Much Music. The who is who's gonna show up? Any rock star was gonna show up to uh, the guests we're going to show up. Eric M., you might... I don't know if she's still around to this day, but you'll see her if you know her. Um, she worked that much for the early days and then to when it's no longer there anymore. But I think they're still around. I think these people are still around to this day. I kid you not. Maybe. But um, And you have Steve Anthony. I don't know where Steve Anthony is. Don't ask me, guys, where Steve Anthony is. And these were just this, uh, people be, uh, in front of the cameras and just do, uh, queuing up the music videos and stuff at Much Music. And these were like, they have these uh, monitors so it can figure out where, you know, the queue up. Anyway, anyway, thank you for the joining this Much Music, early days of Much Music. I'm not going to tell you who wrote the book. You're just going to have to guess at it, folks. Yes. So there you go, folks. To 84 to 95, this place called Much Music. And uh, no longer there. It's a crying shame. Crying shame, everybody. Uh, maybe one of these days they'll probably at the people up at that uh, at that place will go down to the basements and probably find these uh, um, rare tapes that never got aired. Maybe who knows? Uh, but you would have to find the machines for these things, and uh, you would have to get either a VCR machine. Or you would have to get a beta machine. I don't know if there's too many beta machines around the world. Um, but yeah, I got a book in front of me. And yeah. So anyway, peace y'all. Take care, everybody. Ciao for now.